Welcome back amazing people to this episode of Christianity over Islam with Sam Shamoon and on today's episode he reacts to uh, a statement made by Ahmed Jida, one of the Muslim scholars concerning Jesus. Let's watch this amazing video to find out what he said. Okay now, let's listen to this. Thank you, and no, Mr. Didat. Quiet, please. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Didat will make his reply as well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Beginning with John, John, chapter 15, verse 30, as quoted by my brother Shurush, where Jesus is answering Philip, he says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. But if we look at it in its context, again, there are a series of misunderstandings from the very word go. Chapter 14 begins, begins with that misunderstanding and the misunderstanding of the disciple continues. Chapter 14, it says, Jesus is telling his disciples, and whither I go, you know, and the way you know. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. So the disciples say, Master, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? They misunderstood. They misunderstood. Jesus was speaking about spiritual journey. They are thinking of geographical locations, like then the Newcastle, where Southampton. He's talking about God and going to God. So Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay. Jesus this said. was too heavy for them. They couldn't follow what he's talking about. So he says, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. It will be enough. Just show us God. We want to see God with our bodily eyes. And that will be our satisfaction enough. In answer to that, Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. You are a Jew. As a Jew, you have to know better than that, that no man can see God and live. God is not seen at any time. Have you noticed how he just added his own commentary and explanation of Jesus' words and perverted Jesus' words? Is that what Jesus said? Is that what Jesus meant? But we're going to get there. But listen, hear him out first. And you, being with me for three years, you still haven't understood my mission. You want to see God with your physical eyes when you can't even look at the sun. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Meaning, if you understood me, you would understand what God is. And this is the language he's speaking ever and anon. He says, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. This seeing is not physical seeing. Okay. If you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. You wouldn't make such a silly request. Okay, so he that's He's not claim. claiming to be the Father. He's not claiming to be the Father. We agree with you. Okay, so these are the two clips. So let's go to John 14, shall we? John 14. We're going to read 6 all the way to 12. Didat said, this proves that Jesus isn't the Father. Thank you for agreeing with us, Didat. Finally, we agree. But in his haste to try to refute a point that Trinitarians don't make, nor do they believe, he overlooked the things that Jesus did say, which he read, to show that Jesus is God. For example, he read John 14:6. Okay, guys, if you're paying attention, let's see what Jesus said again. John 14:6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You need to know your Bible and Islam if you're debating Muslims. Jesus just claimed two titles that the Quran attributes only to God. It's known as Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. The attributes and names of Allah that cannot be ascribed to a creature. He said, I am the truth. In Arabic, Anul Haq, Al Haq. One of Allah's 99 names is that he is the truth, the reality. Ask a Muslim. Can you call a creature El Haq, the truth? They'll say no. But wait, the Muslim Jesus says, I am the truth. Ouch. One of the names of Allah. But then he also says, I am the life. El Hayat. And El Hay, the living one. El Hayat. Again, ask a Muslim, can a creature say, I am the life? The living one who gives life. They'll say no. So wait, Didat. You quoted a verse where Jesus says, I am the truth and the light to the characteristics and names that the Quran give only to God. 
and you just rush that aside? Here, let me show you where the Quran ascribes these qualities to God. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Watch here. Stuff I've already addressed and gone over. I'm going to read Pictal. This is because Allah, He is the truth. Wait, Jesus said, I am the truth. And because He quickeneth the dead. Quickeneth means He makes the dead alive. Who quickeneth the dead? Allah, who is the truth. And because He's able to do all things. Now watch this, guys. I've mentioned these verses before. Some of you already know this. Some of you may be hearing it for the first time. And because the hour will come. Hour means the day of judgment, the last day. The hour will come. There is no doubt thereof. And because Allah will raise those who are in their grave. So now notice what we just read. According to the Quran, the hour, the last day, the day of judgment, Allah will raise the dead out of their graves because He is the truth who gives life to the dead. Okay, now get ready to be blown away. Now let me show you where Muhammad stole these words from. Where Muhammad stole these words from, all right? Get ready, guys. And hold on. Let me get the verses ready. John 5, 21. Okay, get ready. Are you ready? The Quran says, Allah is the truth. And He quickeneth the dead. He gives light to the dead. And when the hour comes, Allah will raise the dead from their graves. Okay, watch. John 5, 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead. This is Jesus speaking. This is the words of Jesus. Not someone else. And quickeneth them. Gives them life. Even so, the Son, Jesus speaking, quickeneth whom He will. Wait. You, Jesus, are the Son who, like the Father, gives life to the dead, quickeneth the dead? Yes. Okay, but now John 5, 25. Okay, John 5, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming. Sound familiar? That's chapter 22, verse 7 of the Quran. Chapter 22, verse 7 says, the hour is coming. Have no doubt about it. So, the Quran has plagiarized Jesus' words, taking what he said about the hour and the dead coming to life. Look. But in doing that, Muhammad ended up proving Jesus claimed to be God. So Muhammad, the satanic thief, inspired by Satan to steal the truth of the Bible and repackage it and scribe it to Allah. In doing that, he now gave us a weapon by the grace of Jesus to show that you see, even Muhammad acknowledged that these things, these statements, only God can make and do. Watch here. Yeah? Okay, our people, before we continue with our video, um, you can see that in the haste, to disapprove the Bible in a haste to bring out context that is not originally in the Bible, he has actually approved that uh, he has actually proved to us that uh, Jesus is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. In a haste to disapprove the Bible, he has actually proved to us that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Let's get back to this video to bring more details. John 5 25. Verily, verily, I send to you. The hour is coming, and now is, it's arrived, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. The hour is coming, and has now come, where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. This is Jesus speaking about himself in the third person. And they that hear shall live. So the hour is coming where I, the Son of God, will give spiritual life to those who hear my voice. Well, what about physical life. Can you resurrect the dead physically from their graves? John 5, 28 to 29. John 5, 28 to 29. Watch this. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves, graves, what did 22, 7 of the Quran say? The hour is coming where Allah will raise them out of the graves. Jesus, John 5, 20, 29, speaking. Do not marvel at this. Don't be astonished at what I just said. For the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Whose voice, Jesus? He told us in 525. The hour is coming where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. So those who are physically dead in the graves will hear the voice of the Son of God. And what will happen, Jesus? And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So Jesus said, I am the truth and the life. I quickeneth the dead, I give life to the dead, and at the hour, all the physically physical dead will come out of their graves when I summon them by my voice. But according to the Quran, 22, 6 and 7, according to the Quran, 22, verses 6 and 7, it says, Allah is the truth, He quickeneth the dead, 
And when the hour comes, Allah will raise the dead from their graves. You get it? Could it be any clearer that even from the chronic perspective, Jesus claimed to be God Almighty, the creator, life giver, and judge, who physically raises the dead to life by his voice, meaning his voice is all powerful, all sovereign, because these are the things that the Quran ascribed to Allah, and Allah is supposed to be God. And Jesus claims to be the truth and the life, the very two characteristics ascribed to God, Allah, and the Quran. Even though Allah is not the true God, still they think he is. Okay, you thought that was astonishing. John 6, 39 to 40. All the way to 44. John 6, 39 to 40, but we'll read to 44. Again, Jesus speaking. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me. So I'm not the Father. That of all that which he hath given me, all the believers that he's entrusted to me, remember my hand, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So, Yom al Qiyamah, Yom al Din, the last day, Jesus says, I will raise believers immortal and corruptible. Who'll do it? I will do it. Who do you think you are? And now, notice, notice verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me. This is my Father's will who sent me. That everyone which seeth the Son, so this is Jesus again speaking, calls himself the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now notice the Jewish response to Jesus speaking of coming down from heaven as bread. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not, don't complain among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And notice again, look what he claims. And I, I Jesus who's speaking, the Son, will raise him up at the last day. Who do you think you are, Jesus, to resurrect believers and unbelievers physically out of their graves at the last day and then make believers immortal? Who do you think you are? The Quran says only Allah can do that. Again, Jesus in John 6, 53 to 54. John 6, 53 to 54. Again, Jesus. John 6, 53, 54. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I send to you. Have no doubt about my words. Take it to the bank. Take it to heart. Jesus can't lie. He's the truth. Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever, whoso eateth, whoever eats of my flesh and drinks my blood, hath this life, eternal life, this quality of life. It never ends. Morally incorruptible, physically indestructible. And I will raise him up at the last day. Did it sink in, guys? Do you see what Jesus just claimed? Is it sinking in for you guys? Could Jesus be any more explicit, even in light of the chronic terminology and vocabulary, the attributes and titles ascribed to Allah, who is supposedly God? Jesus says things and does things that even the Quran admits only God can do. So why did D-Dot ignore all of that? Why did D-Dot ignore all of that? Why did he overlook John 14, 6? Why did he overlook the implication of John 14, 6? So yes, we agree with you, D-Dot. Jesus is not the Father, but he's the perfect revelation of the Father, who perfectly images the Father, who perfectly resembles the Father, because unlike mere creatures, he's not a mere man, he's God in the flesh, one with the Father, and is able to do all that the Father does, and is always working in you with the Father, so because of that, he's the perfect expression, perfect image of who and what the Father is like. Alright guys, so welcome back. I believe you were able to learn something amazing from this amazing video. And you can see that uh, um, Ahmed Dida in his uh, quest to disprove the Bible, actually prove what Jesus was trying to say. He, he tried to quote Jesus out of context to make his followers believe a different theory about the Bible. But in unknowingly to him, he has approved this long-standing debate of Jesus being the Son of God. From the passage he read from, which is um, John 14, verse 6, where Jesus was speaking to his disciples, where he told them that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he told them that, if you really know me, then you would have known my father. 
Jesus called God his father. And you Muslim says that Jesus is not the son of God, rather he is a prophet. Have you seen that your scholar has proved that Jesus is actually the son of God on this very debate right here? And then uh, Jesus claimed to be, Jesus did not claim to be the father. He claimed to be the son to the father. Have you seen it now? And then uh, Allah claimed from the Quran that he will be the one to raise death, the death on the day on the on the last day and jesus is also claiming to raise the dead on the last day you see islam came 600 years after christianity and these were the things most of the parts where muhammad stole from the bible just to um, blend into his uh, deceiving book which is the quran and you have seen that most of these contexts were taken from the bible and he attributed it to his allah Knowing fully whether this is the word of Jesus, this is what Jesus said, he attributed it to Allah. If your Muhammad now is claiming that this is what Allah said and this is what Jesus said 600 years before Muhammad came into existence, does that mean that Muhammad is trying to pass a secret um, code to you right here that Jesus is Allah, Jesus is the Almighty God? Sit back, let this sink in and begin to ask questions believe you have learned something new don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this thank you